So, I'll try something in small scale, uh, or at least half scale, sort of, to see if it works. I mean, uh, I tried with the 4mm thicker, or 1mm thicker magnet as these to be tweeter magnets and I wasn't convinced it would be enough to flatten the curve so I want something that is capable of putting out more than the base panel itself so I have a, a lot of room to play so I will attach a tweeter thingy here in the end but I wanted to see how the whole combination could work if it works so uh, I attach the rubber magnets as well for the mid, the mid panel. I mean, it's not base. I mean, it's not wide enough. Definitely not long enough. But uh, yeah, I thought I'll use a jig that I had before. But uh, it's based on these magnets, but like 0 0.1 millimeter less wide or 0 0.15. So they won't fit. So that's a bummer. And I didn't want to like recut my magnets but it's something to take into account at least when I make jigs make sure uh, for what kind of magnets they are meant to be used and uh, be sure to cut the magnet at the same thickness and not like one 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter wider because then it doesn't fit and the whole uh, jig is useless so now I have to attach it by hand which is not gonna look the, uh, as pretty of course but I'm uh, hoping it's good enough. So this is just a tedious, tedious job. Uh, and here's supposed to be the first magnet. Well, magnet pen does it by hand. But they have uh, a more visual indication where the magnet should be. Uh, because of the steel used. Still, it's it's quite a lot of work, I think. I will not choose to do it like this, if I could. But at this moment, I don't have a choice. So, it will be a bit more wiggly than uh, normal I could use spacers to help guide me but then of course you need the correct size spacers which I don't have I think this was one point Seven or something millimeter wide. Because I do this by hand, I will be doing the wiring also by hand and not a machine. Because the machine doesn't care if, if these magnets are not placed perfectly. So I can adjust that while making the coil. My machine does not. For this part, I'll use some neodymium reclaimed magnets. Um, reason for that as well. These are only two millimeters uh, thick, and uh, this spacer is four. So the reclaimed magnets that still have some crappy glue and shit on them, um, in this case, would not matter. If I made a tweeter with a very small spacing uh, from mylar to magnet, then the, the shit on this magnet could be a problem. So normally I clean them, which is rather not so nice to do. In this case I can use them without cleaning them, which is uh, a joy. Uh, so, should be here. Magnet should be sitting here. 
next one will be maybe these two here. Well, I'll do the rest. I mean, it's it's boring. Pretty boring. So, all the magnets are in. I added a layer of fleece line on top of it. I could do without, but uh, since after you put the miler on, uh, there's no way of doing that anymore. So, I thought I'll just add it. Uh, it usually or actually never heard. Never heard of me, at least. The only reason sometimes, uh, for instance, in, uh, on top of the mid-range, I do not do it because of, um, in this, at least at this occasion, because it might like sit a little bit higher and touch the, the membrane, which sucks. Uh, and also, because these slits in between these magnets is uh, rather narrow, there is already some sort of damping. So I can live with that. Um, for the tweeter part, because it's rather open, uh, it, it tends to go uh, hunky. Unk, unk. Now here's quite a lot of space. I might, I could add some felt here, maybe. I don't know. I think I'll leave it as as is. You can hardly see the tweeter magnets. They're so small. But compared to the uh, rubber, it's neodymium, of course, so it's very powerful. I mean, if it if they were ferrite, they would already, like pure ferrite, they would be probably already quite stronger than the rubber magnet, because that's a really weak kind of magnet. But very nice to work with. And in this case, if you want surface area and a lot of turns, this is quite a quite a good solution. I mean, it's it's cheap. And as I said, it's nice to work with. Attach the mylar. And I'll use some sticky tape because it's easy. So this stuff I know I made, I made like a zillion times this kind of video, but... <sighs> but yeah...
seen them do the last part, magnet pen that is, them, with a car or, or something. Let me see if that works. Never tried it. Uh, I don't know where they are, so I'll just do it the regular way, which is by hand. They move a car like and then they tap them on the back. I'll use my fingers for now. And you need to put some glue underneath there to make it perfect. Or over it. Okay, so that's that. Now the tweeter part, and I'm not sure how to do that yet. I'm not looking forward to that. Might use the transfer method with uh, paper that you can water so it sticks. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna watch the video first because it had problem problems when adhering. It becomes a bit bubbly because the membrane is flexible. That might still be the case in this one. Also. Maybe not because it cannot move that much, only a few millimeters, but it might still be a problem. Uh, one solution might be like pushing over the entire surface so it does not stretch. Because that, that's the reason why uh, you had like whoop de doos bubbles, or what is it? Uh, so something, you can put it on, then put something on top of it and then push on the whole thing. Not sure if that works. We'll, we'll see. I'll, maybe I'll use a roller see how that works. I managed to get the coil on some transfer tape. Uh, transfer tape is not as strong as the adhesion from um, 3M remount or at least not on my table at this moment so there might be too much uh, remount on that table or I have to get a different transfer tape that is a bit stronger. But overall, we'll see how it uh, how it will work. Just giving this slightly light, very light coats of 3M30 in the hope that I, I'm not sure if that works, but in the hope that I do not apply too much 3M30 to the tape. Oh, now I did. <laughs> But mostly to the uh, to the coil. But I think I'll just just fuck that up. So hopefully the since the adhesion on the transfer tape is very weak, I hope that it helps uh, mitigating the 3M30. So 3M30 is sticking to something that is not very strong. Not sure if that works like that. It's all a balance of what is stronger adhesive than the other to move things from one surface to another surface and stick it down there and remove the piece you use to transfer it. So it's a balance of how much adhesion do you need to get it off the table, how much adhesion do you need to get rid of the transfer paper after you applied it to a new surface with, with adhesion that hopefully is stronger than the transfer tape adhesion. In this case, I apply my adhesion also to the transfer tape, which is not ideal. So is there a solution? Not really. The aluminium should have already adhesion on it before you put it on the plotting table, but that's a problem of course, because then it will stick to the cutting table too much. So yeah, usually you use a backing layer, for instance, wax paper or something, but well, it, it becomes troublesome. Also put glue on here, 
But let's see uh, how it goes. We'll see. So that seems dry. Now let's see if we can. Ooh, that's gonna be hard. I need some backlight. It's hard. Hmm. This is no fun. Something like this? I don't know. This is. So I have to think of a way to do this because I cannot see the magnets, which is kind of annoying. I got a um, transparent transfer tape that might work better. So now uh, at, at hiring this, it's a problem and I'm, I'm not sure if this this kind of roller works because it also like pushes down the miler and it will create wrinkles so I might actually need like a huge roller or something wider like the palm of my hand maybe maybe not but that's what I am gonna use <laughs> anyway Okay, so getting the transfer tape off is easy. Oh wow, I did pretty well. It's amazing if stuff kind of works. But I'm not too sure about aligning with the magnets. I cannot, I can hardly see. So, yeah, I have to think of a way doing this better. It's also uh, because the damping is on there as well, this white stuff, it's even harder to see. I need to make a mark somewhere if I do this for real. I'm not doing this for real, this is just a test. Okay, so now we have to get rid of the paper. I'll first try just normal water instead of the acid or whatever I use. Yeah, it's coming off. I'll, I'll just wait a little bit longer so it's easy instead of just fucking around. So it's soaked in a little bit. Now hopefully we can remove it. I can see already it is adhesion might be a problem and I don't know why well I know why it might be yeah that's not perfect who knows The idea itself is really nice. I like being able to cut coils, store them and use them later on, which is really, I, I love that idea. Uh, also, I like the idea of stretching Mylar without any coil on there. Uh, so it saves time if you fuck up stretching or whatever. 
it just makes it easier. That's the reason why Magnapan does the coiling after it is stretched, I think. Because somehow they do still do it by hand, and I, the only reason I can think of is that reason. I'll add some uh, 30NF on these returns as well. They have some other glue that is probably nicer, but I don't. I'll just leave it to dry, stop touching it. 